Mental health concerns have been a pressing issue for a while now. And with Inside Out 2, the topic of mental health has once again garnered attention. We look at how the issue is now finding a spot in public discourse and why there is still a long way to go. How many times have you felt low, sad or anxious and thought to yourself, am I alone? Chances are at least once in your lifetime. But while not every low phase indicates a severe issue, there has been a steep rise in mental health cases in India. And the recent economic survey 2023-24 talks extensively about it, highlighting the socio-economic repercussions. The policy asserts that mental health disorders are associated with significant loss of productivity. The survey calls for a fundamental change in approach to address the problem. Quoting the National Mental Health Survey 2015-16 data, the survey said over 10% of adults suffered from mental health disorders. The prevalence was found to be higher in urban metro regions as compared to rural areas and urban non-metro areas. But not just in adults, the policy document also noted an increase in the cases among adolescents, further propelled by the COVID-19 pandemic. Citing NSERT's Mental Health and Well-Being of School Students survey, it was highlighted that a staggering 43% of students experienced mood swings. 11% of students reported feeling anxious and 14% as feeling extreme emotion. An issue that has been brushed under the carpet for years is now starting to find a spot in public discourse. And it being acknowledged as a pivotal driver of individual and national development is an important step forward. But even then, the issue only hits headlines when a person of a celebrity stature talks about it. The most recent example of this is Hollywood's latest animated offering, Inside Out 2. A sequel to the 2015 Pixar film, Inside Out 2 introduces four new, complex emotions – anxiety, ennui, embarrassment and envy. Notably, Inside Out 2 has emerged as the highest grossing animated movie of all time, and its resounding success speaks volumes about how the audience is finally ready to talk about it. Which is perhaps why Riley's overthinking and anxious moments have gained the maximum traction on social media, with many posts and memes dedicated to it. Moving away from the spectacles of the big screen, several celebrities have opened up about their personal battles against mental health issues in the past. In India alone, big wigs such as Deepika Padukone and Karan Johar have thrown their weight behind mental well-being. While Padukone has not shied away from talking about living with depression and even become the face of mental health awareness with her Live, Love, Laugh Foundation, Johar has been vocal about suffering from anxiety attacks, seeking therapy and being on medication. From Aliyah Bhatt to Anushka Sharma and Varun Dhawan, many have publicly shared details of their low faces. Hollywood, too, isn't far behind. From Tom Holland to Sophie Turner to Louis Cabaldi and Sam Fender, popular stars have taken breaks when things got a bit much for them. The situation is quite similar in the sports fraternity, where Simone Biles, who has now made an Olympics comeback, pulled out of the women's finals at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics to focus on her mental well-being. Naomi Osaka withdrew from the French Open due to post-match anxiety. Ben Stokes took an indefinite break from cricket to prioritize his mental well-being. And Indian skipper Virat Kohli stepped back and talked about not holding the bat for over a month. What these conversations essentially do is empower many others to speak about it. It's sending a message that if we can, you can too. Statistics show that one in every five suffers from an illness related to mental health. It could be anything. Anxiety, depression, 
bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, or any other manifestation of a compromised mental health. But that's not all. In 2019, 970 million people around the world were reported to be struggling with some or the other mental illness. And despite the alarming figures, one wonders what it is that stops us from talking about it. And the questions remain. Will the mental health issues of a common person ever be addressed at scale? Will there ever be open discussions about depression at dinner parties or work meetings? Or is taking a break and even talking about it remains a luxury only meant for some and not for all?